Okay, so I hope this is going to be fun. Um, I want to show you how to be able to make a pizza absolutely from scratch um, uh, in basically less time than it takes to order a pizza. So uh, usually that's around half an hour. Now, the only thing that I have done um, is I have just pre-cooked the fish, um, just in a little bit of butter with some Bragg's liquid aminos. Um, and I've just pre-chopped a few things that are gonna, gonna go on it. Now, everybody knows what they kind of love on their pizza. So you don't really have to follow anything that I'm doing um, because everybody knows what they kind of want to put on the top of the pizzas. But just to give an example, here's what I've got. I've got a little bit of avocado, I've got some microgreens, uh, I've got some spinach. Uh, this is goat's gouda. This is ginger. And this is actually persimmon. Um, uh, and I think that's gonna make something really nice. So you, so you have the kind of the sour and the sweet together. Um, and I'm actually gonna make the, the base from scratch as well. Um, so this is the fun part. Now, um, what I've discovered, uh, I've fallen in love with something called green banana flour. Um, uh, this is an organic one. Um, it's wonderful. It's really uh, good for supporting the good guy bacteria of the gut. It's full of resistant starch. Um, and I'll show you how to make this base, which uh, really can be done in, in 15 minutes. So let's give it a go. Um, so all I've got here is I've just got my um, uh, Maggi mix, uh, and I'm just going to use three eggs uh, in the base. Uh, and I've just put it inside of here just so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So just one egg. Uh, these are large eggs as well, organic large eggs. Always please make sure to use organic. I don't think I need to tell anybody why at this point. So three eggs. And in this case, what I basically do is however many eggs I use, I will just double um, the amount of green banana flour. So um, I have three eggs here, so I'm gonna use six tablespoons of green banana flour so that they are just flat like that. There's one, two, three, And believe it or not, that is your base. Now I know it doesn't sound like it and it probably sounds horrible at this point. If you want to, you can add spices, you can add some herbs if you prefer. Um, I'm just gonna keep it really, really simple just so you can see exactly what's going on here. So all I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to mix this up and then I'm gonna turn the pan on as well and just put a little bit of butter inside of it. So now that's all mixed. Uh, I'm also just going to turn the grill on, uh, which is what I'm going to use just for a couple of uh, minutes at the end, just to melt the cheese on top. Now, when it comes to um, butter, I put a decent amount uh, in here, just so that the pizza base doesn't actually stick uh, to the bottom. So I'm just going to let that quickly melt. And then if we have a look at, this is coming straight out of the Maggi mix. You can just see it's almost like pancake mixture. In fact, kind of what we're gonna do is something like a pancake. All I'm gonna do is just gonna pour this completely in. Just gonna scrape this off to begin with. Pour it right in. Okay, almost. Okay. And then all I'm going to do is really just flatten this out like it is a giant pancake. Just kind of push it all the way to the sides. Just keep going round, nice and even, kind of all the way out. Okay. So this is gonna make a kind of large pizza 
you know, so good enough for two or three people to kind of share. And as you can see, it's starting to bubble, almost blister in the middle there. So it's just starting to cook. So just keep kind of pouring it out towards the outside, nice and even, as best you can. Okay. We're just going to let it cook a little bit here. You'll actually see that it'll start to blister. It's not doing it yet. But if it is kind of moving too close to the sides, just kind of move it away from it. That just makes it a little bit tricky when we're trying to turn it. So it really is like a giant pancake. So we're just going to continue to let it cook. Yep, so it's hardening up nicely. Just going to leave it a little bit longer. And this is on high heat as well. Okay. So it's ready to turn. And here comes the fun part. If I did just put my hands on there, it's quite hard. A little bit spongy, but quite hard. Um, now, here's the tricky part in that you are trying to flip a very, very large pancake. So the trick is to actually use two spatulas just to be able to pick it up on both sides, like so. And in front of the camera, let's hope this works. Uh, there we go, perfect. <laughs> Love it when it works. Okay, so now you can see it's looking quite beautifully cooked there. Now, at that point, I turn it on to low heat. And at this point, we're really just gonna put on what we wanna put on the top of the pizza. Now, traditionally, you would always use tomato puree at the base there, you still can. I personally don't particularly like it. Um, so it's entirely up to you if you wanted to do that. So what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna use the cheese itself. And the cheese is kind of what's going to be binding everything together. Um, so this is goat's gouder. So for those people that do struggle a little bit with dairy, they tend to find that with the alternative cheeses um, that they tend to be better with, particularly the casein A2 cheeses. Um, but again, you'll just have to know that for yourself as to how your body handles it. So I'm just gonna put a base layer of the cheese, like so, and then it's just a case of putting everything else on top. So this is just some sole that I had made, as, again, just with butter and a little bit of liquid Bragg's aminos. Add the persimmon. Add some of the ginger. There we go. Some garlic. The key with the pizza is to not overload it um, with too many things. Uh, it's sometimes easy to get carried away with just adding too much stuff. And to be honest with you, I may have added a little bit too much stuff uh, to this, but um, I still think it's going to work. So some microgreens. And again, the thing is, is just whatever you like, really. There is no rules <laughs> when it comes to what people like on top of their pizza. As you can see, I don't know that you've ever heard of anybody using persimmon on top of their pizza before. Um, so get creative, really, just for the sheer pleasure and the sheer joy of it. Okay, so now that everything's kind of on top, as you can see, I only put about half the cheese on. Just gonna flatten it a little bit there. And then I'm just gonna add the cheese on top. And this just kind of helps to hold everything together so that it really will work. Now that the cheese is on top, again, I'm just gonna flatten it out with my hands. Be careful not to touch the sides. The sides are very hot, but of course the top is not at all. You can easily do that. Um, so all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put it under the grill for about four minutes. Okay, so now it's ready to take out from the grill. Um, the cheese is nicely melted and turning a little bit crisp. So I'm just gonna take it out. You can see now, I'm just gonna turn that off. 
Now, here's another part of it, is just to make sure that none of the cheese is kind of attaching to the bottom, otherwise it won't slide out with much grace and ease. It looks like this is pretty good, so all I'm doing is I'm just sliding it right out, and there you go. There you have a, a pizza uh, in less time than it takes to order it and is uh, very, very good for your digestion. So all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to cut it into pieces. There you have, <laughs> there you have a very, very lovely pizza uh, in less time than it took you to order it. Now, the only thing to bear in mind is that with this base, the, it's, 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 a, it's a slightly flimsier base, as you can see. So you just have to be a little bit careful about picking it up. Now, the reason why that's happened is we didn't really give the base any chance to kind of harden. Um, so if you do uh, prefer to have a slightly harder base, the best thing to do is to prepare the base first and just let it sit for 15 minutes and then put the toppings on and then place it under the grill. Um, and that's absolutely fine. But if you're wanting something quick, if the kids are uh, wanting dinner, um, then you can basically do an entire pizza from scratch in less time than it takes to order it. All right, hope you enjoy it.